Hey, hello everybody. Well, today when I went to the Ram store, the Vintage Tech Museum is open. They're having a convention, uh, like take apart or something convention, and they open the museum up for everybody. This is the Tektronics Museum. Here is the, camp the Tektronics campus here. We are there. Pretty big building. Or pretty big campus. This is the museum. We're going to get some special access today. Um, I'll try to go slow. I've only got like 15 minutes because it's nearing the end of the day. Show you some of this old equipment here. Tubes. <laughs> Way above my figure. This is some old equipment. I might not get all the way through it. My I accidentally left my microphone on. Your curve tracers. And they keep all this equipment working. Jack Murdoch Park. That one. It's modern. This is, we're here for vintage stuff. So we're getting into the meat and potatoes here, guys. Ready? They give tours. This gentleman's giving so these people a tour. Right. Hewlett Packard. So Let me use some of these old scopes. Yeah, look at that. So, one of the things that Czech uh, pioneered also is just the construction. Rogers amplifier. Yeah, he has been wanting me to come in here, so I finally made it in, guys. So these, uh, you guys have to come here. It's in, that's on the Tektronics campus in Beaverton, Oregon. They're very, very friendly. They'll give you a tour if you call them. Um, so that aisle is kind of blocked, so we'll come over here. Oh, we got some modern stuff here. What board is that? Sort of test board or something. MDO demo one. Either modern stuff. Yeah, some old computers here. We'll go back to that aisle there in a minute. So, digitizing oscilloscopes. These little tiny guys. Baby scopes. 308 data analyzer. Some of these up here. Try to go slow. This is the Tektronix Museum, which is awesome. What are they doing? Uh, oscilloscope art. Uh, on this side, PDS 420. So that's their restoration room, and that's where we're going to get some special access today. We normally don't tour the restoration room. And they said, for me, it's not a problem. So look at this. Look at this mainframe. Only got 15 minutes before they close because I accidentally left my microphone on. But 
If you guys ever get out here, you guys should come in here. Um, this stuff is awesome. Wizard of ID. It was vector graphics. More vector graphics. This is this stuff's cool. Electronics bling. Uh, yeah, this stuff is cool. Oh, that looks like a TDS 500 board. I recognize that board. It looks like a TV board. Sort of tape. More tubes. They used to do, uh, they used to make their own uh, CRTs here in uh, Oregon. So. Diamond, nitrogen, this is diamond, diamond, sorry, nitrogen, so it's a, it's got an effect in the crystal. Through here. So this was a fairly expensive. And this is a 2710. That is, I used to own one of those up until 2020. It failed in 2020. I bought it. At the country store when they were in the old building in around 2000. Wow. Um, and I have a YouTube video. If you follow my, uh, if you search my YouTube channel, you'll find out the failure on that one. And uh, I got rid of that in 2020 and upgraded to a Siglent. Yeah, it's a nice. Okay. Um, anyhow, I'm just finishing here. This package has been twenty thousand dollars. Sheesh! In 1980, Mike. Yeah. Oh my God. We didn't see this. No. I'll get this on the way out. This is called a rapid scan spectrometer. These keyboards were made after IBM Selectric typewriters. Yeah, it's totally different than what you see today. Yeah. And um, not just focused on that. Yes, yes. Um, my uh, mom is a nice right. Right. Let's go do our special access. I will be right back because this is where we're going to have the special access right here. Okay, I've got I've got all the permissions and everything to go the special access to the repair facility. This is Matt. He's going to be hanging out with me. He'll be here in a minute. This is all the parts that they have, vintage tech parts. These are some capacitors. It's a few. As, yeah. As we're spending months and months They're, labeling and organizing. They've been labeling and organizing it. This is their really awesome organized uh, ICs, resistors, sockets. This is all the stuff used to rebuild and restore the, this vintage tech equipment. You got pals, gals, chips, electrolytics, electrolytics. Um, um, then you have over here, you have the manuals. This is a gold mine here. Some of these are are one off, haven't been reproduced. Um, mind if I open a? Sure. So these are all the repair manuals for. So do you think you have all every product here? Nope. And there's probably manuals I wish there. We did. So if anybody has manuals that we don't have. Uh, we'd love to have them. Do you have a list of manuals that you have and don't have? I'm trying to remember if there's a list. Well, we, we can get that later. Yeah. These um, are all the 
manuals back here that okay. we have for sale. Okay. So you have them on eBay? Some of them, but okay. not all of them. I'll, I'll, many, I'll many. link your guys' eBay in the description. Um, and then here we have more parts. Looks like cables. It's kind of a mix of stuff. Uh, Fuse holders, graham crackers. <laughs> it's you know, heat those, are, those are tech made resistors. Graham crackers? They're, yeah. Tech oh, made those. Tech made these. They it look was, like a graham oh, cracker. That, not that one. Uh, that's this. Let's see if I can find one in here. These are, I call them sand resistors. Sand resistors. These are the graham crackers. So they're silicone rubber. Oh. And they're, they're slightly flexible. That's cool. Wire wound. Tektronix 2K. That is cool. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. So, yeah, there, there's so much of this vintage stuff here that's kind of one off. Oh, um, it's a lot of tech stuff. Uh, not all. It's a mix of tech made and, and uh, purchased. The tech yeah. made just about everything. We're, we're trying to, we just did these boxes getting ready to put more parts in. They're, they're very, very well organized here. Well, it's, we're trying, but it's a big project. And down here we've got, looks like power supplies and stuff. Probes. And anything on a shelf they said has been, uh, this, this is, is, this is our shelf of loaner. Okay. We loan out to kids and stuff. Okay. If they can't afford a school. Instrument library. Yeah. I see. And there are vacuum tubes back here. Can we have vacuum? This is this is just a gold mine, and they need volunteers that know how to repair this equipment. Um, but they said anything. Most of the stuff on the shelf is has been rebuilt, uh, or is for are, parts. These are pretty new, so those are pretty new. Uh, new stuff. Rack fifty. Our newest. Oh, look at look at these. Seven K plugins. Yes, all the plugins. Mainframes on this side. I mean, this is special access, guys. I don't, you guys aren't going to see this anywhere else here. Be sure to... This is one of a kind. Yes. <laughs> one of a kind. So we try to list on the end of each, each? What, what's on the shelves. So okay. rather than take time and look, yeah. you just quickly say, okay, yeah. if I'm looking for this, it's on this on rack 11 or rack 9. Or... This is... Um, this is just lots of oscilloscopes. Mr. Carlson, eat your heart out, man. <laughs> this is a test equipment dream. So these are donations. Uh, most most of them. You know, this is this is what a museum is, you know. And that's what they have there on that one. Some TM500 stuff here. Um, looks like mostly all TM500. There's some TV product stuff in the back. Uh, spare tubes. Oh, CRTs. yeah. Spare tubes. Now, tech used to make their own CRTs, if I recall These right. Mostly all tech stuff. Yeah. This one might not have been, probably, but. Yeah, they've got a lot of stuff. This is television products back here. We made the best TV products in the world. Yeah, you guys still made uh, up to the beginning of the digital cable era days. Yeah. You guys were kind of like the leader of it in the 90s and early oh, 2000s. So we, we made the best in the world. The Olympics and all that. Uh, we had, had our stuff at the Olympics. I don't know what's back here. You probably can't. It's like yeah, more I'm, CRTs. More CRTs back there. I'll try to get a angled shot down there. A little dark down there. Yeah, a bit dark. Oh, yeah. More CRTs. Yeah, more equipment on that way. I won't walk down every one of these. Just yeah, to, these are just I'll, I'll, I'll zoom so you can series, see. Portable scopes. Oh, we got to go down that aisle. <laughs> there you got to go this way. These are some of the little portable mini 200 series Sony tech stuff, the smaller. Um, and these are your 400 series and some of the 22, 23, 2400. 
and these mostly have been like I see safe for parts, so parts, parts, parts or, or working units. Yeah, we try to keep uh, what is it, two or three uh, good working units. But we always have something on hand. This is all. Oh, okay. There's so many specialized tech parts. If one broke, what do you do? Where are you yeah. going to get? Where are you going to get another one? You're not. So I'm. Sp I'm surprised they didn't keep a lot of the data for this stuff. Well, I don't. When you, what do you mean by the data? I like CAD diagrams, blueprints, drawings. Back in the day, we kept them for a long time. <laughs> but so that if I was thinking about doing uh, proposing to my legislators an orphaned equipment bill, bill to where it would, if a company went out of business, that all their stuff would become public domain. Say if they went out of bank, you know, went into federal bankruptcy or something that the bankruptcy trustee would seize the, seize the IP and make it public domain. I'm still thinking about proposing that, but why <laughs> that way if, if, if stuff needs to be repaired or in the future, except for you and I. Okay. <laughs> oh, there's a lot of people, that, a I'm, lot of people on record. Right. Okay. Yeah. Here, here are their, service stations that they use to repair these you, you these were actually uh uh when i worked there i worked there 21 years uh our our engineering benches that tech made themselves we had carpenters and they built these and so we got them to to uh you know they were not needing them anymore. looks like he's working what's this again uh 4051 or two uh it's uh the numbers are gone off here just because he's working on it. Yeah. And he's got this one open. One of our guys that volunteers here, he's not here now, but uh, he needed it, somebody to fix it. So we put our best uh, super sharp tech engineer on it to fix it. <laughs> he's, well, he's having a lot of fun with it. And yet, you know, schematics, which are. Because when you're in the production line, you have. Did you want to get back in here? No, I was, I was just going to ask you a question. Oops. Yeah. And then they've got that more, a couple more benches here. These are the tech repair stations. So. so they still work on this equipment at the component level. Um, here's their microfishes. They need to get these scanned and digital made digital copies. They have a scanner over there, but here's another station. It's all mostly older equipment for repairing this older equipment. But uh, well, I don't know. I was looking for the. We want to thank Matt. Thank you for the tour. You're welcome. And this is an exclusive, and I didn't catch your name again. I'm Richard. Richard. Nice to meet you, Richard. My bad. She's stack, and uh, be, if you guys are in uh, Beaverton, Oregon, be sure to stop in and check out the Tech Museum. You're open on Saturdays. And uh, Thursday is a normal hour work day, but if you request a tour, um, okay. we have to make sure somebody will be here to give you a tour. So you okay. have to plan, you know, uh, schedule it. Yep. for somebody to be here so yeah so they're open on saturdays thursdays are their work days and if you want a special tour call them up and schedule it and they will try to get you into a schedule so if you're coming from out of town they'll try to accommodate you so best. we'll catch you all later everybody